morning, everybody. Uh, fox. It's that easy. Right. <laughs> uh, we, some of us know some of the old stuff you've done. But uh, I'm going to talk about some of the newer stuff. Um, I understand you've done a, a strip for Anne UK, Fenn and Zeppelin. I've got your. Uh, yeah, they, um, <coughs> they took me about this time last year, and uh, they, they asked me to do a cover, and uh, they gave me a list of, um, uh, of uh, films and uh, uh, animations that they wanted to cover, and said, um, whichever one you want from these. So I said, oh, I want the Gunbuster one, I'll kill anybody else who, who says they want to do it, because I really like the Gunbuster. And, uh, then a week later, I got another letter from them saying, oh, we decided to branch out into doing comics. Would you like to do us a comic strip? So I uh, went away and thought about it, had a chat with Alice, and uh, we came up with an idea for a, a completely new series, which is, um, um, from my point of view, um, I wanted to do all the stuff that I couldn't do with Red Fox. Because that was very fantasy um, based, sort of DVD sort of set up. So I, I wanted to do something with skyscrapers and, and TVs and spaceships and, and uh, mecha, that, that kind of thing. And uh, <coughs> we also decided to, we, we had this tie come up in there for uh, about two years then, but we hadn't done anything with the full set of And so we decided to. Uh, use that as a basis and do a, uh, a story about um, a group of uh, interstellar uh, rock band zebras. Um, so uh, that was that was the basis for it. We knocked together a, um, a, a sample story for them. They, they really liked it. And so we started working on it and we got uh, we did two full complete stories. And um, I've got samples here, which you may get to see at some point, if you get to the high-tech gear gets all nice. And then I was busily penciling the third episode, and by then it became apparent that um, they, they, they had already missed two publishing deadlines, and uh, there was no sign of any money coming from them. So um, we kind of took the attitude of, well, we'd quite like to keep doing this strip, but we can't actually afford to do it until we start paying us some money. And, uh, they haven't paid us any money, and they haven't published anything, so um, it kind of ground to a halt. But uh, we're now looking into um, taking it to an American company and uh, seeing if we can interest them. It's um, Antarctic Press. Uh, they do lots of Japanese style stuff, and they do lots of anthropomorphic stuff, so I think a uh, uh, Japanese anthropomorphic style strip would be just that. Yeah. <coughs> And uh, this year's kind of been like that. I did, um, I did a cover for Games Master Magazine, um, which I actually got paid for. I got paid very well for, but um, never actually got published. The fact that they changed the editor between the time that I delivered the artwork and the time that uh, they went to press, my fact I'm going to do it. I don't know. <coughs> and um, also did a, a newspaper style strip. 20th century drive um, for um, a magazine called Venue, which is actually one of the most popular things I've ever done um, because people keep asking to reprint it. Um, it's, it's going to be in the, um, the WorldCon, you know, next, next year, um, the, the WorldCon, they do like a daily newspaper for it because it's, it's so huge and they've uh, asked if they can reprint it. But and someone else has wanted to open it as well. Unfortunately, no one wants to pay me for it. <laughs> or I'd do them some more. And unfortunately, it sort of reaches this point where time is money and you might love to... Um, they, they might be a project that you really want to do, but um, you, you literally can't afford to do it um, unless someone um, is, is prepared to, put, to, to pay for you to take the time to do it. Because Otherwise, you tend to start. You might have lovely pictures, but you don't get to. Could you go and give that student a bit? Basically, we'll link up that camera to the TV so you can get a good close up of the. Uh, 
to the least work. But the only thing that I can bring is on for something like this. It's um, one of the few things that did get published this year. I've um, been working on doing quite a lot of work with um, anime based companies this year, um, anime projects. Um, who are based in Google these days, but used to be just have their own company. Um, asked me to do uh, design for their, their new merchandise money. They wanted a, um, a cute furry animal with, with tiger stripes. Oh, yeah. So I did. And they really liked it. And they paid lots of money. In fact, it was quite embarrassing. Because, uh, the, the way it normally goes is that um, someone pays you to do lots of artwork and they will pay for first usage rights, which uh, means that as soon as they've actually printed it once, then you get it back again. And if they want it again, then they've got to pay for it again. And you can sell it to anyone else. But uh, when it's something like for um, a logo or something, then it's the, they've got to buy all the rights. And that is very, very expensive. And it's not often done. Uh, I know uh, Games Workshop bought a, a picture of Chris Achilleos because they, they had des the design studio was a big fan of Chris Achilleos. Uh, they, they asked him for, to give them a picture. And they bought all the rights to it. It cost them a thousand pounds. And so they had to slap it on everything they could possibly associate with this picture just to, to make the money back. <coughs> um, I understand you've got another idea for what, what is this idea that this game strip that you've done? Oh, well, um, yeah, the, uh, I've, I've actually, uh, <laughs> because of my um, um, not immensely success in this game, I've actually been having. Uh, bit of a rest. So I'm going to up with doing work that people were not getting paid for it, not having a budget. I could stand with not getting paid for it if it was actually seen in print and you know the um, people could could actually see what I've been doing. But when no one gets to see it then uh, I'm a bit disappointed. Um, but uh, I've recently been getting itchy fingers again. So um, I've been thinking since um, the 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 diet's been so successful. I was thinking another one in that format, but uh, um, sort of mildly parodying some of the elements you find in an anime, um, because that's something I'm interested in. Um, and, uh, see if I can do something with that. <laughs> that get the TV and video wired.
very impressive. It'll do. It'll do. You can all see it? Yes. Kind of. Right. Say the one sat behind the pillar. It's Zed Zebras. Yeah. I have a feeling we've probably seen this. The first page. This page. This is, um, this is a Zed Zebras strip I mentioned. Unfortunately, it isn't the letter yet, because they were supposed to be organising that. Would it work if they just smashed together? Don't do it! Thank you. 
feed off of these inflations. So that's why I asked you if uh, we could um, possibly have a, a, another look at this yobs side and um, make it a little closer to the original. He hasn't said anything to me since. Um, but uh, that is, it's again, it's finding someone who will actually um, pay me to, to while I'm doing it. Right? And then there's, there's a lot of stuff people keep asking me. You know, why don't you do more of that? Why don't you do this and that? Um, you know, if you like doing it, why don't you do it? I'd love to, but finding a publisher is a real problem, particularly in this country, because I'll be the one who's selling publishing companies in this country. And, uh, now, there's 2000 AD related things, but you have to talk drinking oil pumps in London to, to do any, any work for them. Because they're, they're all very sort of um, place friends. And uh, well, there's an irony in the world, I've seen this country just doing it, so you have to tend to go to America. Yeah. And uh, that's a hard thing in my way. Any other questions? Why the shift to manga style? What do you like about it? Um, there was always a, a certain influence there. There's, um, there's a particular panel in, in Red Force 3, uh, which was actually a direct steal from something that I'd seen in a, uh, a, a Japanese panel. But I, I really like the technique. So I know I, I know I find it difficult to, to remember when I first got interested in the Japanese stuff. I like a lot of the um, stylistic devices they use. Um, there's, uh, there's a lot of very effective things that they use, which are now turning up more and more in Western markets because um, they, they borrow it very heavily from them these days. Um, and uh, I started, I did the first stuff I got, and it was completely untranslated. I went down to Dick's Newport in uh, uh, London. Just went through with their shelves. They've got shelves and shelves of um, the collected editions of, of Japanese books, and I just I couldn't read any of them, so I I just went through them and found ones that I like the pictures in. And I just bought it online. And uh, nowadays there's a lot of stuff, and I really liked it. I really took to it, and uh, that was uh, as I say before, it's trying out styles, and uh, this was rather than. An individual style, this was a whole genre style, and, and I really liked it. So I started using aspects of it, and then when, when anime started um, being seen in this country and, and people started producing it, then I thought this is a direction that I've got that to go in because I'm interested in this stuff. And uh, there are very many anime artists in this country, and uh, so. <coughs> I, I, I got in touch with all the young the and the and uh, my new companies in the country to come out and do me some work. And, uh, um, so that's, that's, it's really um, a technique that I'm playing with at the moment. I'm somewhere else where I get more than these and three years. I'm not even done with these. There's, there's a lot we can do. It's, um, there was, I was reading a, a thing the other day which was a, a list of um, you know you've seen too much anime in web. And one of the things was uh, on the list uh, when you're watching Star Trek or, um, or Star Wars and uh, there's a space battle going on, you're thinking to yourself, there's not very many explosions going on. Because in the, in the anime, it's, it's just totally over the top. A space battle in an anime can get completely ludicrous. There's one in um, Macron. Where there are, you are told that um, I think there's something like 20 million spaceships having a, 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 a space battle and Earth stuck right in the middle. You get to bit scorched, but it was like the, the radar just can't handle it and it just just um, blows out because there's there's too many spaceships there. <coughs> and uh, you can just say go safe and be over the top. Oh yes, I, yes, I don't think you're um, I always wanted to be a writer when I was a kid. Much earlier than when I was interested in being an artist. I can remember when I was twelve. I would write stories and um, you know, put them into the clips. I did, did whole series on it. And, uh, but it 
it's something that I've never quite had the confidence to, to really take very far. I've been working on uh, a vampire novel, um, which I wrote the first five chapters of, and uh, then, then realised I didn't have a plot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I think I've read some of those. Um, oh, there's, um, there's, there's some lovely stuff that I'm really pleased with, but um, it was what I'd done basically was take the idea of what's it like being a vampire in the present day if you're just like an ordinary person and, and you haven't got a vast fortune and, and uh, you, you're not centuries old and, and no one's given you the, the guidebook. And <coughs> so it's all about this um, um, I think about 18 year old girl who's uh, just becomes a vampire and, and uh, how, how she manages to survive in the modern world and um, uh, I got really taken with it and I said I did about five chapters of it and um, then, then I kind of thought well it's got to go somewhere <coughs> and, and it wasn't and it was only last year I got, uh, got into a, a brainstorming session with someone and we worked out a plot for it and it's, it's really gruesome. There's some really unpleasant stuff in it. It's, um, it's an idea that I haven't seen a lot of It's very, very modern to about quite uh, genetic engineering. <coughs> and I don't really want to say very much about it because it's, uh, I don't know, if I say much about it, it's going to nick the idea of it. Because uh, it's going to be ages before I get around to finishing it. Um, I've also done a bit of journalism. But that was one of the. the, the um, how I got involved with anime project was I went to interview them for uh, Venue magazine, and uh, um, that was when I met the, the bloke in charge of it, and sort of struck up a, um, a friendship with him. And in fact, he asked me <coughs> a couple of months later uh, to to write a novel for them. They got um, a contract to um, produce a series called Record of Low Lost War, which is a very D and D sort of um, series. And apparently there was a novel that goes with it and they, they could get it translated by someone who was who Japanese, but they wanted it put into idiomatic English. And they asked me to do it. And I thought, oh that sounds like fun, I haven't done that before. And um, unfortunately that fell through. Um, but as far as I can make out every anime company in the country has been trying to get low dollars one and no one's got it on the list yet. Um, what else have I done? Um, oh, I did, did a piece of the Dream Watch last month. Um, all about the, the BBFC. And uh, I'm hoping at some point in the future to do a big feature article or actually go down to the BBFC. He's the British Board of Film Censors. Um, and find out how they work. Is, it's, it's something that fascinates me, you know, how do they come to, to all these bizarre decisions that they make, and uh, you know, how, <laughs> how do they, they chop out all these uh, interesting bits of things and stuff like that, and uh, it's something that interested me, so I think it might interest other people, um, so I'm hoping to organise that sometime in the future. <coughs> Whose work you like or particularly admire? Hundreds. It, um, this this changes from like week to week, um, depending on, on what I'm looking at. But, uh, there are a, there is a long list of artists that I, I really admire, and uh, um, whoever sits at the top of the list tends to, to depend on whether I've been reading any of their stuff recently. Um, I think. Uh, there's, there's a number of Japanese artists that, whose work absolutely stuns me. Um, I found the, the guy who does the, the Akira series, um, I find his work, I, I just, it floors me completely because he'll do like 10 pages of really intricate, realistic artwork of, um, um, you know, just scenes in a, a city 
just to get us some room. Um, you know, other people would have told the story by the time he's finished setting the, the, the mood of the piece. And uh, I can't believe all the work that goes into it. I could never do that, that kind of work. I want to get on with telling the story. And, uh, yeah, that's, Um, they, when I first started out, there were a number of um, artists who influenced me a lot when I was first getting started. And uh, so when I was doing work books, I took the opportunity to, to ask a number of them to do covers for me. Because, um, you know, I, I like their work so much. It was, uh, it was better than getting an autograph, getting them to, to draw my characters. So that, that was how um, I ended up with uh, a Brian Bond cover, a John Bond. Japanese animated 
and it's absolutely wonderful. Um, it's one of the, the best things I've seen um, that has been produced for a long time. For an animated cartoon, it's quite adult. Yeah, and it's it's quite simple in the animation, but the style of it, this sort of very Art Deco style that pervades the whole thing, and there's a lot of attention to detail on it. And I, did, I was quite surprised when I noticed in, in one episode they blow up the Batmobile, and so for the next episode, Batman driving around on a motorbike, and there isn't actually a reference to the Batmobile having the Batmobile, but um, he doesn't actually get to use it. And then the episode after that is all about um, them getting a new Batmobile, and that is not the sort of con uh, continuity that you usually see in an American cartoon. <coughs> Of course, they they shame them all out of order in this country, which doesn't help. But uh, the, they made uh, a movie called Mask of the Fantastic, which was supposed to get theatrical release, but it's a cartoon and it's not Disney. So they went straight to video in this country. And even Disney had noticed that they can um, they can make money on animation, and the, the last couple of things they've done have been quite nice. They were they ran into a slight problem with the, the latest one, The Lion King. Because apparently even the, uh, the the actors who were working on it got it confused with a, a Japanese series that ran in the early sixties called uh, King of the White Lion. And apparently the parallels are so close, not only in the visuals but in the story, that um, it the, the the Japanese company that made the original obviously they they didn't want to bring litigation into it, but they would have appreciated some recognition of credits. And uh, Disney had just said, no, no, it's nothing like it's too obvious. And um, well, everyone believes that because they were really like it. I've noticed over the last 20 years, reading comics and sort of the kid, comics have grown with the audience. They've when I first started reading comics, things like 2008, it was very much aimed for the kids. And comics in general, things like Batman and Superman, have become far more adult orientated. Some of the storylines are very mm, it's adult. Um, I sometimes despair of the comics industry. Because uh, it's uh, it often gets hijacked by I think, the, the, yeah. the accountants and the marketing. But the situation at the moment is uh, very diverse. I mean, when when I first started working in comics, there was um, in America was DC and there was Marvel, and there were a couple of little independent companies that nobody really was getting notice of. And now there's um, there's a lot more companies in it, which allows for a lot more diversity. Um, admittedly, most of the new companies are just doing more than the old <coughs> um, there is a lot more um, original and individual things going on than just sort of putting super hitting each other, um, which I'm very pleased with. 